the legitimacy and the constitutional legitimacy of the government cannot be questioned because it is preserved by the constitution itself. There is no void, there is no lacuna, and there is no room for the creation of any other form of government or authority. The President of the Republic of Kenya continues to enjoy full executive authority, including the powers bestowed on him as the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces. Gidu Mwigai is no fool. He's simply being mischievous and dishonest. And we want to tell him not to play that game on Kenyans. Tell Kenyans the truth, because when you keep on asserting that a lame, dark caretaker president is in full authority, everybody wonders what the word full authority means. I do not think that uh, parliament, the legitimacy of parliament can be affected by a subsequent event. As at the time that the president promulgated parliament, he was and he continues to remain the legitimate president of the Republic of Kenya. All right, and of course we want to drill deeper into that and a raft of other issues as a promise. And we have our panelists already here in studio with us. We have lawyer Miguna Miguna with us. Also, we have Senator Kipchumba Murkumen, who is the senator of El Girl Marquet. We do have with us also Senator Mutula Kilonzo of Makueni. We do have also with us Senator Kimani Omatangi of Kiambu. And also we have with us Dr. Otende Amolo, who is a member of parliament from Rarida. All right, let's now put things into perspective, looking into what the Attorney General is saying. And of course, also we have a rejoinder there from uh, Senator Moses Wetangula as well. Let's begin with you, uh, Senator Kipchumba Murkoman, because you quoted as saying there is nothing like a transition, uh, there's nothing like transition or interim government until the swearing in of the newly elected president of a government in the office enjoy, enjoys the legitimacy. And that, of course, is uh, this is what we are talking about, the ticklish issue with this particular uh, constitutional crisis that, that is looming. So are we facing a constitutional crisis or not? Uh, we, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dibal, for having me this morning. I, I think there has been erroneous or mis misuse of words uh, in this debate. First of all, we don't have a constitutional crisis. Everything that was that is happening in the country today was contemplated by the Constitution. The, the Constitution contemplated a situation where there will be a rerun. Constitution contemplated a situation where there will be a fresh election. Yes. Constitution also contemplated a situation where the president will be elected and he wins. Now, wh why was it important to put in place Article 134? Uh, Article 134 was to protect, you know, uh, the incoming president from the actions of the of the outgoing president and the incumbent president was restrained from doing certain things because in the in the past the sitting president would in his last days appoint maybe 20 ambassadors you know mm -hmm. would end up appointing uh, principal secretaries who would have continued to serve, although in the new constitution, every new government would appoint new principal secretaries. Now, all these actions were restrained by the constitution to facilitate that transition. There are two interpretations in Article 134. Mm -hmm. The first interpretation, which I agree with, is that once there is a fresh election, yes. when, you know, because I believe Article 134 was put there to facilitate a situation where between the time the president is, uh, is elected and the time the new president is coming in place, you restrain the president from uh, doing certain things. Now, the Supreme Court, in my understanding, nullified the elections of August 8 and declared null and void. Null and void would mean that it is as if it never happened. Now, if those elections never happened, then the trigger effect of Article 134 that talks about the president being 
uh, you know, um, incumbent president is not in place because until the elections of 26th of August, yes. where the president again, another elections will take place and the president will start assuming temporary incumbency until a new president is sworn in if he's not going to be elected or until he is re sworn in if he's going to be re-elected. That's first interpretation, which I agree with. The other interpretation is for some people to say at 134, will continue to act as a president is incumbent until the fresh elections is repeated and uh, maybe one doesn't get 50 plus one, you again repeat another one, which is a rerun until you have a president. I don't agree with the second interpretation, but it's popular among uh, critics of Jubilee, uh, uh, that second interpretation. The last thing I want to say is that even then, assuming that the president exercises temporary incumbency, until another president is sworn in, <coughs> then that temporary incumbency is curtailed by the Constitution in Article 134 yes. and makes it clear that it is in regard to appointments. There is no single provision of Article 134 that curtails any other function of the president except appointments of uh, 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 officers. And uh, th th this is in black and white. The last thing I want to say, and of course, there is, there is an addition of the power of mercy or confer honor. But most of the provisions in Article 134 is about nomination and appointments, uh, except, of course, conferring power of mercy, which rarely happens, and uh, the qu issue of honors, which is even curtailed by parliament now until certain recommendations are made to the president. So. My take is that there has been wrong insertion of provisions like caretaker government, uh, provisions like uh, 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 lambda government, because the government itself is not the president. The, gov the, the person who formed the government is the president, but the government is running all through. Mm -hmm. The only people who are enjoying this very temporary incumbent uh, period are people who are uh, not going to be fired, even if they, <laughs> uh, they don't uh, uh, perform to the level of the requirement of the president. All right, Let, let's hear from uh, Motola Kilonzo. You hold with this view? No, I don't agree. Uh, and, and let me explain that. Uh, the, the, and I will use the, the words in the Constitution. Number one, I don't believe uh, that Tony General is right and is behaving like, um, unlike what uh, Nathan went and talking David when he found him committing a sin. The, the, the Attorney General is behaving as if is the lawyer of the president as opposed to the attorney general of Kenya. And I believe, therefore, that he must interpret this constitution in a manner that serves the interests of Kenyans as opposed to one faction of the political divide. Number two, where we have a, a dispute about the provisions of the constitution, instead of the attorney general calling a press conference, uh, what appears to be a hurriedly done a press conference in a hurry, as if he's just justifying his job, is to seek an advisory opinion of the Supreme Court. But that Supreme Court is the same Supreme Court that my friend here says that, you know, they will revisit, they will teach a lesson on those things. Mm -hmm. But in a, in a proper functioning system, we would go and ask. But let me tell you why I, I Kip Chumba Morgan is wrong about the position of Uhuru Kenyatta today. Yes. If you look at Article 142, it talks about, the words there are very clear. It says the president shall hold office for a term beginning on the date of which the president was sworn and ending when the person next elected. Uh, underline the words, when the person. If you look at Article 141, it talks about the president elect. Now, I've just given you two, three terms. There's the next person, the president and the president-elect. What is Uhuru Kenyatta today? If you look at article, the one that Kipchumba Mulkoman is referring to, and please uh, turn with me to the same, to article 134, yeah, 134, yes. Look at the words, and before I go to that, just turn with me to article uh, 132. 132. You see, it begins with the word, 132 one, the president. Dibal, are you with me? Yeah. The 131. Shall, yes. Yes. 131 authority begins with the word the president. Mm -hmm. If you go to 133, again it says the president. Now go to 134 so that you understand the reason why uh, uh, you have a problem. But before I even go, look at deci decisions of the president. 135, the president. 136, the president. The president. What does 134 begin with? The words, a person who holds the office of president. 
or who is authorized in terms of to exercise the powers of the president. So the correct interpretation is that Uru Kenyatta is described in this constitution as a person who is holding the office for purposes of this. Because he's not a president-elect, he has not been re-elected, and if you look at the terms of the constitution in terms of Article 142, the term of president, the term is clearly defined. So therefore, the, the word incumbency, temporary incumbency here, hold sway to the extent, therefore, that the words that he is holding office temporarily, and it's a temporary incumbency, is justified by the words here. But I don't think that is a crisis. Uh, uh, Dibali, you asked the wrong question. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, correct question in the minds of Kenyans is, what is the consequence of not having a presidential election as provided, as ordered by the Supreme Court? That is the fundamental question yes. that should have been answered. And that is what Githu Mwiga should have been answering. Not the question as to what is supposed to happen between now and October 26th, because as far as this constitution is concerned, there is a person holding that office. It's described here. And that person <coughs> is in the office, and that person is Uhuru Kenyatta, a person. Mm -hmm. Not a president-elect, not a president, but a, a person holding the position. Right. Yes. And I'm still coming can, to that because the, can the, anyone the, help? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, can let, help? Let's give let's give also <laughs> Miguna, Miguna a chance to actually weigh in on this uh, before we move on to that particular question you're asking. Because of course uh, I'd also uh, taken an article there by uh, Kibe Mugai, the constitutional lawyer, who mm. thinks also as uh, according to Article 140, subsection three, if it's a vote and we don't have a president, uh, this constitution is silent on that as well. So. Also, you'll, you'll make it clear for us as well. That is the lacuna I'm talking about. That is the lacuna you're talking yeah. about. Fine. Let's, let's hear from uh, Miguna, the, Miguna. the ball. good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, I happen to agree with uh, Senator uh, um, Mutula Kilonzo. <laughs> uh, this is not even a, a question of constitutional interpretation. Uh, this is an issue of common sense. Uh, Debal, if uh, you hold office, uh, whether elective or appointive, and your term comes to an end, which means your, your term of service expires, and it needs renewal or some kind of action on the part of your employer to renew your employment. Between the time that your contract expires and a new one kicks in, if at all, mm -hmm. because it could also be denied, somebody else could be employed, uh, your powers are restrained. There are things you would not be able to do. You would not be able to procure, for example, on behalf of your company. You would not be able to terminate employees. You would not be able to hire new ones. Yes. So uh, your powers are strictly curtailed, uh, not just by law, but by common sense, mm -hmm. because you are occupying a position uh, in the interim before a substantive holder is appointed or elected. Yes. This is precisely where the president finds himself. Mm -hmm. That is why Senator uh, Mutula Kilonzo is right. He's a person who happens to hold the office of the president in the interim. And the constitution says the exercise of presidential powers during temporary incumbency. Yes. That is the heading of Article 134, the drafters of the Constitution were very clear, and they did not anticipate any conflict. It is only in Kenya where such simple and straightforward matters become issues of national debate. In countries which are governed properly uh, according to the dictates of the Constitution, the Constitution didn't have to provide for that because it is expected that People holding public office particularly have common sense. Why would you be elected into public office if you don't have common sense? It would be expected that the president himself has common sense and would know that his term ended when the other election happened and there was a problem with him being sworn in. When the Supreme Court uh, reached its verdict, the majority, which is the court, it nullified his re-election. His previous term had come to an end. 
So where does he get the legitimacy to exercise powers that he would otherwise have had? There is nothing that the Constitution donates to him once his power expired. It is pure common sense. Now, Senator Murkoman went to law school and presumably has been practicing law. If he went and argued the way he's arguing here, he would lose the case the same way he lost it during the presidential petition. And this is the problem with Jubilee. Accept obvious things, acknowledge obvious issues, then you gain credibility. Thank you. But don't let us argue about this nonsense, which really amounts to nothing, because we are just wasting time. Okay, thank you. All right, let's hear from uh, Dr. Otenia Molo. <clears throat> thank you, Dibal. Um, I think Senator Murkomen explained two versions of the interpretation. Yes. Uh, while the second is excusable, wrong, but excusable, I think the first is outrageous. And let's put this in very proper context. There are two articles that one must look at. You must look at Article 142, and then you look at Article 135. Under Article 142, it defines the incumbency of a substantive president. That incumbency is defined in terms of a five-year term with a maximum of two terms. But the day the election date is set, once the first ballot is cast, whoever cast it anywhere in this country, the very first ballot, then you abandon 142, you must come to 134. And once you come to 134, which deals with temporary incumbency, there can be no occasion of going back to 142. So the first interpretation by Senator Murkomen is completely outrageous. Yeah. Once you have triggered 134, constitutionally, you cannot come back to 142 until and unless you are sworn in again as a new president. Now, once you've come to 134, and this now comes to the second explanation and uh, the Attorney General's explanation, it is true that under 134, the president enjoys temporary incumbency. Yes. It is true that you are a, a lame duck president while enjoying temporary incumbency. Why? Because 134 ties your hands in the most fundamental of ways. Internally within the country, you cannot make any appointment or fire anybody. Any public officer, any judge, any ambassador, anyone. Externally, your hands are tied in terms of foreign relations. You cannot appoint anyone. So that, that's a very, very fundamental uh, inhibition in your powers. Now, this is the clincher. The Attorney General uses the word constitutional legitimacy, that the President has constitutional legitimacy. He is wrong in two respects. We must separate legality from legitimacy. What the Attorney General meant, and I think Senator Murkomen and others, is to argue that legally the President must continue. Legitimacy is a different, a completely different concept. And in this debate, something is lost here. Let us ask ourselves this. President Kibaki had served two terms. His second term came to an end in 2013. Supposing he had triggered what sometimes we believe plays around with. Supposing he had decided to play around with parliament to refuse to approve the budget for the general election. And then, as has happened in other African countries, they say, we don't have money for an election. And then argue, but that there's no problem because there's no <coughs> crisis. The president will continue until the next president is sworn in. And that argument continues for five years. What situation would that be? Is Senator Murkomen and his colleagues like trying, to, to, yes, trying to suggest to us that even if they used numbers to, to sabotage approval of a budget, for example, or to scatter a general election entirely, there would be no problem because the president can continue. The president will not continue because he will not have legitimacy. <laughs> what we are dealing with here is this. Article 134 says, and it is true, that the powers of incumbency will be enjoyed until the next president is sworn in. But that is because Article 134 contemplates that that election will have been held within the time the Constitution stipulates, which is 60 days. If you don't hold it within 60 days, then you come to a constitutional limbo. You are limited in terms of invocation of 134. You had left 142 and you cannot come back to it. 
That is the crisis. So okay. I agree with Senator Muntula Kilonzo Jr. that what we should be focusing on is what if the elections were not held. But as we, as we are here, I believe we still hope that it will be held. Hope it will be held until maybe also uh, IBC meets your demands, of which now it seems this is a ticklish issue altogether. Indeed. Let's hear from uh, Senator Kimano Matangi. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dibal. Uh, l let me say, for listening to my friends, uh, my good friend Wakili, and uh, Senator Motula, at least they've done better than uh, Wetangula. Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, because, you know, Wetangula, on the clip that you played there, is, is just uh, posing threats, <laughs> but not explaining himself. Although, you know, and then we have had this debate here before. Maybe he didn't have the luxury so, of time. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you deal with these gentlemen uh, who are called lawyers, you know, they, they can really mislead you. Even, even from very basic things that you can read and interpret. I mean, I would use the words of the Supreme Court, read only, version. I mean, this, <laughs> this, 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 is, this, is, this is read only. You, you don't need all those. Remember, we have, we have had this debate here, Dibal. And, and what they have read is very correct. I mean, the, the first question you'd ask yourself, in my view, is very simple. I mean, what gives rise to what the situation is that is called a temporary incumbency? What gives rise to that situation? Two, what is that period defined as temporary incumbency? And it is very clear in Article 134. I mean, it begins by telling you that that period defined as temporary incumbency begins when that first vote is, count, uh, is cast and when the president-elect is sworn in. That is the only period. Or otherwise, defined in Article 147.3, in which then the president will either be incapacitated or will have allowed the deputy president to act in his capacity because of absence. Those are the, th those are the circumstances which are clear that you'd have a temporary incumbency. And if these gentlemen as lawyers, and especially uh, Wakili Otiende Amolo and, and Mutula Kilonzo, coming from NASA, and having celebrated the Supreme Court ruling themselves, unless they are saying, one, they are in contempt of that same same ruling, which was very clear, that as far as 134, on the question of the incumbency between that period, of the first vote, vote is cast, and when the president is, is sworn in, the elect is sworn in, the court ruled very clearly that this election is invalidated, it is null and void. I have had so many occasions when Otiende Amolo, when Mutula Kilonzo, and when my colleague have also defined what does the court mean when it says that an action is invalidated, null, and void. They have explained that very well to us here and said that, that the court said in very clear terms that that action is as though it never took, took place. Mm -hmm. so, so, so in the first place, if the court, if they believe in what the court said, that that election never happened. It is as though it was never there. Then the circumstances of 134, of between when a vote is cast and when the elect is, is, is sworn in, does not even uh, come into play. It is already invalidated But by that. So secondly, on, 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 on this uh, last, last bit when um, we are talking about uh, the, the Article 142, on the term of the president, mm -hmm. for goodness sake, how else do, do you define it better than the Constitution then to give rise to the, 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 the circumstances of Article 147? I mean, the president will, and that is the question that uh, Otiende Amolo asked and, uh, and, and uh, Mutula, that will be the subsequent question, what happens if in 60 days there is no election? If there is no election, then the Constitution is also very clear that you have a president whom you elected, he is in office, until the time when you have another president being sworn in after being elected. That is the time when you have a, you, you have a change of office. So, so you cannot have this in between places. And, and because this all at the end of the day boils down to politics, the easiest thing to tell our colleagues here is the faster we go to an election, the better. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Let us hear from Murkumen. Can yeah. I respond to a Please. few of these things? One, number one, is that of course you can see my colleagues here struggling, uh, well briefed, to look for an interpretation that uh, leads to Nusumkate, as usual. Um, and so you, you know they are playing to the gallery. But if they were true to the constitution, fidelity to the law and the constitution, the same constitution that uh, led us to where we are, never ever contemplated a vacuum. Never. In fact, 
Uh, I'm surprised uh, Tendo Molo played a key role in this constitution. He's trying to tell us that there is a constitutional limbo. There is none. There is absolutely no constitutional limbo. It is assumed and it's believed. Just the way we believe that the Bible is perfect towards God's word, it's believed that a constitution is perfect towards uh, people's governance. Until, of course, the day and time you want to amend to suit a different situation. But as we speak today, we have no crisis of constitutional crisis in the country. You may have a political crisis. You may have an economic crisis uh, occasioned by the politics of this country, which has even led to you know, sports being canceled in this country, the crisis that we have in terms of people, what they believe in this country. But we do not have constitutional crisis. That's why the Attorney General was very careful in, choice, in his choice of words. He said that the president is exercising or is under a constitutional legitimacy. What Otiendo Molo was expressing here is to try to say the president is not politically legitimate, which is a different discussion altogether, which I also don't believe. Number two is that all this discussion, we must ask, ask ourselves one question. What's the motive? What is Kenyans lacking uh, uh, to try to say the president should have done one, two, three, but because of the situation that he is in, uh, he cannot do it. The president held a cabinet meeting last week. They approved the budget for parliament. That budget is going to be discussed today. The president opened parliament. Mutula Kilonzo uh, uh, came in uh, to, to debate in the house, although uh, because of his uh, uh, principle out there, he used to come log in, stay for a few minutes, listen to our debate, and go away because he doesn't want to lose his uh, allowances and his seat. Um, so there is absolutely nothing that you are telling me today the president is unable to do except these appointments. And the president has not complained. He hasn't complained to anyone that I should have appointed so-and-so, I should have fired so-and-so. Of course, politically, we would like to have this situation uh, resolved and we go back to um, uh, normalcy politically. But you can't tell me that the Constitution never contemplated this situation. Number two, the Constitution assumed that it's going to be governed by reasonable people. Reasonable judges, reasonable politicians, uh, you know, that it will be a people, reasonable commissioners. There are many situations w which you could describe what uh, Otiendo is saying. Assuming today all the commissioners of IBC resign because these people are chasing them. Who is trying to do that? NASA. It was expected that the Constitution will, was going to have politicians in NASA who are reasonable, who have read the Constitution, and who love this country. But assuming that they are going to pressurize IBC to be ineffective, of course, they will get what they want, that we extend the term of the president, as it says in Article 142, that it will be in an office until another president comes. They will have extended the term of the president, but really, they, they, they will be now asking for the Nusum Kate thing. And I want to inform the public, because I can't say I will inform Mutula Kilonso or, uh, or Otiende, um, because they know. They are just feigning ignorance. I want to inform the public that if it comes to situation where you want that Nusum Kade that our friends are really yearning for, it will be impossible under the Constitution. The Constitution, Article 3, says that the, you can't form government outside uh, the Constitution. To amend the Constitution, Article 255, you need at least, assuming even the interpretation is that the, that part of government does not require um, a referendum, you need at least eight months. Yeah, because the Constitution says you do first reading of the bill in one of the houses, three months it stays before second reading. So assuming every house at the very minimum, you know, having pushed it, will, will have it for four months, you will have eight months to amend the Constitution to give these people the some cutter they're looking for, which of course Kenyans are not uh, uh, going to satisfy that one person's greed. So I want to dissuade my colleagues and tell them that uh, let's not come and you know, lie to the public here, yeah. let's not come and uh, play to the gallery, let's have that fidelity to the law, the Constitution, believe that the president will be in office until the next president. The motive, we are, the mischief we are trying to cure here is, 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 is neither here nor there. At least the government is running, like uh, Guido Mugai is saying. The legitimacy of that government in the Constitution is not in question. And it is only that the presidency curtailed, assuming. And as I said, that is, even if I was to go with the interpretation they are uh, saying that the first election was not land avoid, because these people want to have their cake and eat it at the same time. Right. Assuming even we are talking about temporary incumbency, that curtailment of appointments does not mean that the government is not running. All right. Uh, Mutula Kilonzo, because we have uh, Mulkoman saying that also the opposition uh, is infatuated with coalition government, right? Mm -hmm. So in, 
in, in the presence of maybe the article, person of Article 140, subsection 3, never happening, which, uh, of course, it says that if the Supreme Court determines the election of a president elect to be invalid, a fresh election shall be held within 60 days after the determination. If it doesn't happen after uh, the 60 days, as you said, we, 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 we are sort of in a limbo because also the Constitution did not envisage uh, a place where maybe somebody will subvert or avoid an election mm. uh, as what we are getting from NASA right now is maybe they are sort of uh, playing a jiggery pokery play uh, with this particular six days to try and uh, avoid an election as has been advanced by the Jubilee government no, as well. No, 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 no. First, allow me to a right of reply to respond to Murkoman. I never attended the president's uh, speech debate. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing about the president's speech that I need to debate. So you didn't come and swipe your card to, uh, no, no, to get no, an no, allowance? No, no, I never attended. But the, you came the, to the house. The only time I attended, <laughs> no, the only time I attended is when we, they were electing the deputy speaker. That I confirm I attended, uh, uh, cast my ballot, and left. The minute they, they finish with the presidential debate, I'll, I'll be back in the house. Number two, uh, Senator Murkomen, unlike, unlike me, he, he has to justify the uh, position he is as majority leader, and that's why he has to make this statement. So he's the one who is playing to the gallery, <laughs> because he has been rewarded politically for being, you know, but, what he does best. But, but the, posi reward, the position, the position, I'm not looking for that reward, and I, I'm not going to get any for, for saying the wrong things. The, and that's why I've said, Dibal, that you're asking the wrong questions. Mm -hmm. And I want to agree with Miguna that we are actually debating an issue. This is what is called a non-issue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and to answer to uh, Senator Omatangi, my friend, you know, the, this thing about read only, that you understand, you know the Bible in Matthew 4, 4 says, man shall not live with bread alone. Does that mean that you only live with bread alone? You know, that, that's, that is what I call layman. This is layman interpretation. These words in the Constitution cannot be interpreted in the manner he's interpreting it. To suggest that simply because the, the Supreme Court nullified the election of Uhuru Kenyatta, under Article 140, the status quo ante applies is absolutely layman thinking. <laughs> you can't think like that. It's not allowed. It's not, it cannot go to status quo ante. Thirdly, the fantasy created by Jubilee that anybody in NASA is interested in Nusu Mukate, trust me, we are not interested in sharing anything with them. Leave alone power. We, want, we do not want to touch anything to do with Jubilee. So the, the, they must be, the, this is an argument they make to the public to look as if NASA's only interest is power. So they look, they want to pretend as if they want to share it, as if this power is theirs. When, when uh, Senator Mulcom and my friend here says they are going to amend the Constitution, they have numbers, we have majority, they behave as if this Constitution is jubile, has Jubilee colors. That is that, and therefore I want to say this here, that yeah, when yeah. when when we talk about these constitutional principles, I have, I don't hold brief for anybody, but the president Uhuru Kenyatta today is holding brief for the person who will be elected. That is how, in legal terms, we would call it. So when you find uh, somebody in the name of Githumu Guy pontificating on national TV about something that is so obvious, you begin to ask the question that the panelists here are asking. What is it that he needs to justify that doesn't need to be justified? Who doesn't understand what is 60 days? Dibali, you've asked me that question. Mm -hmm. We understand that. But on your last question you have asked, why is it that it looks as if you do not want to uh, uh, um, participate in the election? Otienda Amolo here spent a lot of time speaking simply, as opposed to some of the lawyers appearing for Jubilee with big words, so much Latin, for nothing, explaining why that election should be nullified. And it was nullified. So the demand to say that the things that were found to have been done wrongly should be rectified, it is no more. And Diba, let me tell you what the crisis is in this country. Assuming that we're going to an election on 26th of October, like we should. And the, nobody attains the threshold 50 plus one. of 50 plus one and 25% in 50% of the counties. The re-election, the next election is supposed to be held in a cycle of 30 days. Now, 
Can you imagine we are having this debate and God has given us grace? And I, I keep telling Kipchumba Mokomen, he one day is going to repent his sins for castigating the Supreme Court, that they gave 60 days. What if it was 30 days and IBC is not ready? What was this country supposed to do in the 30 days? Yet IABC is not ready. You can see from the headlines. So, Dibal, please, we must understand under Article 83, the principles of holding a general election, a presidential election, are very clear. These gentlemen want to go to the House, they want to revert to manual, manual voting. Who does that? A, a government that came into power using a digital platform Thank you. now wants to go to manual. Right. Next, we are going to hear, we are going to return the Mlolongo system. When I say Jubilee is Kanu, I'm telling you, Jubilee is Kanu, and Kanu is Jubilee. Right. <laughs> well, let's hear from Iguna Viguna. <laughs> the ball, yes. um, I believe that uh, Jubilee is behaving as if the government belongs to it. Uh, and I think it is wrong for uh, individuals who occupy donated power. The public has simply donated power uh, to Senator Murkomen and others for the time being. And you have to take that as you are holding office in trust for the people. Uh, the office does not belong to you. You don't own the people and you don't own the office. So, so they have to be very clear about that. And there are no people in Kenya, no section of our population, that are not entitled to hold the same positions that they hold. And you are not born, God did not create you to hold that office. You don't have a birthright to an office. So President Uru Kenyatta does not have a birthright to the presidency, nor does Senator Murkomen have a birthright to be in government, or even to be senator for, 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 for that matter. He is holding that office for, uh, in trust for the people. Now, let me a answer uh, specific questions and start starting from where uh, Honorable Utiendia Molo left it. Uh, what makes uh, one a legitimate president in Kenya? You see, that's an important question. Not what makes one a legal president. What makes one a legitimate president? You become a legitimate president by being elected validly. How do you become validly elected? You become validly elected when elections are held in strict adherence to the Constitution and all the applicable laws, and it is free, fair, transparent, verifiable, and credible. What happened to the August 8th election? The Supreme Court has established as fact that the presidential election in this case mm -hmm. did not adhere to the constitution and to the applicable laws and were not free, fair, transparent, uh, verifiable, and credible. Therefore, the Supreme Court concluded uh, that they were uh, invalid, null, and void. What does that mean? Where does that leave the president? Consequently, mm -hmm. It leaves the president with his term having ended and with a new term not having begun. That is a lacuna, if you want to use the word, uh, the Latin word. That is what a lacuna means. That is what a void means. You are in between, but you have not reached your destination. You have left, you have not reached, you are in between. So you can't say I've reached my des destination. Now, constitutional interpretation cannot be done literally, which is what uh, Senator uh, Wamatangi was doing. It has to be done contextually, meaning that you have to have common sense, you have to know the laws, you have to know the constitutional provisions, all of them, and then you have to know what is called the practice. Uh, what case law establishes. And in this case, you know, they have been fighting with the court and have been propping up uh, dissenting opinions as if those are the things that the court made uh, held, when in fact it is not. So let me ask the question, what happens if there is no validly elected president after 60 days <laughs> following the nullification of the August 8th presidential election? That is the most important question. The term of the current 
temporary president ends, so he does not hold temporary incumbency anymore, and you have a constitutional crisis akin to what you have in DRC Congo. If you ask anybody with common sense that is there a constitutional and political crisis in Congo, everybody will tell you, yes, there is. Does Congo have a president? Yes, it does. What is the name of the president? Kabila. The fact that you have somebody occupying the office of president does not mean you don't have a crisis. There will be a crisis. And let me tell you how it will be resolved. It will not be resolved on the street. It will not be resolved like uh, Senator Murkomen wishes to, to think it will be, by chest thumping and saying we are in power, we are occupying presidency. Nor it will, will it be resolved by Gidumwe Guy. What will happen is that an application will be made to the Supreme Court to be able to tell the country what it is uh, Uhuru is holding, President Uhuru Kenyatta. And the determination of the court will be very crystal clear. And I'll tell you what it is. The court will say, by operation of law, yes. the term of President Uhuru Kenyatta ended. A new president has not been elected. We don't have a president. As a result, we need to have a caretaker or transitional authority or government to prepare for elections Thank you. as an operation of law. All right, let's and that. that will happen whether they like it or not. All right, is that the partner we are taking right now? And of course, is that a game plan of NASA? Yeah. That is a question that we want to see on the other side of a break. We take a short break right now. When we come back, of course, we do a leap on that to clarify on what no, will happen after the 60 good. days. Will we be facing a constitutional crisis or not? So don't go away. You're watching People and Politics here on AM Live, running on Decision 2017. Welcome back. You're watching People and Politics here on AM Live. The Attorney General Githu Mugai has stated that President Uhuru Kenyatta still enjoys executive authority, including being Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, downplaying the fears of a constitution crisis. The government's chief legal advisor says President Kenyatta and his government will continue enjoying the powers bestowed upon his office until the swearing-in of a president elected on, the, on October the 26th. President Kenyatta's Legitimacy cannot therefore be questioned and, quote-unquote, any attempt to establish a government other than the way stated in the Constitution is unlawful. This is what the Attorney General says. The Constitution only restricts President Kenyatta from carrying out some functions as stated in Article 134, Subsection 2, which include nomination or appointment of judges, appointment or dismissal of cabinet secretaries or any other state or public officers and conferring the power of mercy or owners, the AG also added on to that. National Super Alliance, that is NASA, has described the status enjoyed by President Kenyatta as temporary incumbency, as stated in Article 134 of the Constitution. And of course, we continue to drill deeper with this. I've created a first time this morning with lawyer Miguna Miguna. Also, we do have Senator Kipchumba Murukumen, who is the Senator of Elgo Marquette. Senator Mutala Kilonzo Jr., who is the Senator of Makueni. Also, we do have with us Dr. Otende Amolo, who is a member of parliament from Rarieda, and of, of course also we do have with us as well Senator Kimani Matangi from Kiambu. Before we took a short break, we were looking at beyond the 60 days what really happened. Now we plunged into a limbo, but before we go there, let's take a listen to this particular bite by the Attorney General. The legitimacy and the constitutional legitimacy of the government cannot be questioned because it is preserved by the Constitution itself. There is no void, there is no lacuna, and there is no room for the creation of any other form of government or authority. The President of the Republic of Kenya continues to enjoy 
full executive authority, including the powers bestowed on him as the commander in chief of the defense forces. Gidu Mwigai is no fool. He's simply being mischievous and dishonest. And we want to tell him not to play that game on Kenyans. Tell Kenyans the truth, because when you keep on asserting that a lame, dark caretaker president is in full authority, everybody wonders what the word full authority means. I do not think that uh, parliament, the legitimacy of parliament can be affected by a subsequent event. As at the time that the president promulgated parliament, he was and he continues to remain the legitimate president of the Republic of Kenya. All right, and we circled back with Dr. Atenda Molo when we took a short break. We wanted to get clarity on what happened after 60 days a week, uh, of course, plunging herself into a constitutional crisis. Dr. Atenda. Uh, thank you, Bob. I think that this case has been explained at length, and I think Miguna Miguna summarized then the consequences. Um, uh, I think that anybody who buys that argument should be prepared to buy an extension of that argument. That because there is no limbo, there is no lacuna, President Kenyatta will continue. And the Attorney General and Senator Murkomen and Senator Wamatangi and the others could choose to tell you that therefore President Kenyatta can continue for 14 years from today because there is no limbo. If you are prepared to buy that kind of argument, then uh, you must be prepared for the consequences of, of, of that kind of thing. But Senator Murkomen says pre the president is enjoying full powers. What are the inhibitions? The president just missed a UN General Assembly meeting because he's not a full president. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something fundamental? That's a lie. Isn't it true right now? And if you want to test, if as they're starting to tinker with the IBC, the chairman of the IBC were not to be there or were to resign, then you will test the depth of that constitutional mm -hmm. crisis because the president as he is now cannot appoint a substantive commissioner. So there's a lot that would happen there. I would rather not talk about that anymore. I would rather examine a different issue. Mm. Why is Jubilee hell-bent on tinkering with things within the 60 days instead of helping NASA fix things so that we can have a legitimate election in strict compliance with the Constitution and the law as ordered by the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. There are four things that Jubilee is doing. The first one is instead of respecting the decision of the court, they're trying to undermine it by undermining the individual judges. No legitimate government does that. You accept the decision of the court and you act in accordance with it. You don't start finding reasons to attack the personalities to call the court wakoras and thugs and stuff like that. You delegitimize the Supreme Court at your own peril. That's number one. Number two, they are avoiding assisting us hold the IEBC to comply with the law. The court did not order an election within 60 days. It ordered fresh elections in strict compliance with the Constitution and the law. The litany of the things that happened that led to the invalidation of the elections are clear and we can enumerate them. Those are the things that NASA has put as irreducible minimums. Why are we insisting on them? It is not so that we cannot hold election, as uh, Senator Murkomen says. It is so that we can come to an election. And when Raila Molo Dinga wins that election, we do not want it to be invalidated because IBC did not do the things it needed to do. What then they are doing thirdly is because the, the court said in strict compliance with the Constitution and the law, and they find that the law, when complied with, will disfavor them. They now want to meet and change the law. You've just seen in the papers today, and Senator Murkomen is on record as saying, they are going to amend, I don't know what, they're going to change a lot of things. No game can suffer the rules being changed midway. You don't do that. But in any event, even when you try to do that, you do it at your own risk. 
because they think they have the numbers in parliament and the senate they can change the law unfortunately for them they don't know a lot of these things are embedded in the constitution they try to change them they will be declared unconstitutional the fourth thing they're doing is this we were in the supreme court we asked for scrutiny of everything the the actual ballot uh, papers and the electronic uh, you know uh, data and details mm. they opposed it the supreme court went ahead and ordered a partial scrutiny. The Supreme Court ordered a scrutiny of the forms used, not the ballot papers, but we had asked for everything, and also ordered a scrutiny in terms of the uh, IT infrastructure. The IBC refused to allow that IT infrastructure audit. The registrar of the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court led the process of auditing the forms. The report was submitted to... Um, a court and the judgment was issued. After the judgment, now the Jubilee regime comes and says, ask the court, why didn't you open the ballot boxes to count the ballot papers? Something they expressly opposed. It's very interesting. You go, you ask for something, the court gives, you oppose it, the court gives part of it, then you now come and ask the court, why didn't you give all of it? Yet you had opposed it in the first place. Mm -hmm. These narratives are all meant to camouflage a situation where they would rather we go for elections without complying with the constitution and the law because they think that has loopholes that will favor them. So when they say NASA wants Nusumkati, NASA does not want election, this is supposed to be subterfuge. And I urge all of us to avoid that subterfuge. There is nowhere where any NASA official has ever asked for any Nusumkati thing. Mm -hmm. It keeps coming from their lips. It stays in their lips. We don't want it. We want the entire government. And I think we should all focus. And if we come to it, I will show you, Thank you. why the purported response by IEBC to the NASA demands does not meet what it should do. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, let's hear from uh, Senator Omatangi, because also the Jubilee uh, has, uh, has moved to courts to seek a recount of the ballots as well. Is that the case? Has so we, we, yeah, yeah. We're okay. Aware. Um, We're uh, aware. I think, thank you're you. not aware, but yeah. But you, thank you, Dubal. Uh, it is Dubal, in, as in I, the pipeline. They have moved. They are seeking a recount, and of course now this will also really add another tripping wire to IBC. who are planning to hold an election, and they go back now to the ballot boxes to do a recount as well. Yeah. Thank you, Dubal. As I as I as I take on to answer that question, because I'll, I'll be quoting one or two articles of the Constitution. But allow me first to, <laughs> clear, to clear something here on behalf of 42 million Kenyans, yeah. uh, and which is very clear, and we have had this debate here before, that the first page of the Constitution, the first page, yes. before you even go to the articles of the Constitution, mm. in the preamble, refers and talks about we the people of Kenya, not we the lawyers of Kenya. And we have had this debate here. <laughs> we the people of Kenya. And, 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 and you see, it, it ends there by saying, re read the last line, that it says that we give to ourselves this constitution. Mm -hmm. Not to lawyers. Not to lawyers. Not and, and, and you see, th this is a big problem we have been having with this <laughs> gentleman here. And, and you know, uh, Dibal, for, for avoidance of doubt, yes. we went with, to the same schools and colleges with this gentleman. They only sat in, di in different classes, doing other things, and, and we are doing other things. That, that, that does not mean that we do not know or are ignorant of the law of Kenya. And this constitution is intended to be understood by 42 million of Kenyans of us. Mm -hmm. And the only, the only organ, person, or body allowed by the constitution to interpret it is the Supreme Court. I mean, I, you, so, I mean you cannot be going to Mutula Kilonzo for his own interpretation, to the other one for his own interpretation. Every Kenyan, even Mama Mboga, in uh, my country, in Wangige, has a right to know and, 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 and comment on this cause and understand this law. So, so you know, I, I want uh, to my, my friend Mutula to understand that, uh, you know, the approach to, to, to law and how we juxtapose our arguments and discussions and understanding of it is not in your words, layman. And, and then, you know, if, if you want to then uh, have it your way, are you saying it should be elitist? I, I mean, because, I be, 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 because you, you see, there is no other contextualization of the law. Dibal never allow anyone, although you're not a lawyer, to tell you that you do not know why you're here in Kenya and what you should do and why you should not jump the lights. 
and why, why you should go to the ballot and vote. Nobody needs to tell you what, beyond what you can read in this, in, in this constitution. And I hope many lawyers are good. By the way, Mutula Kilonzo, I, I read a small article uh, that was being written by some lawyers complaining of, of how there is, there is a lot of, uh, you know, a surge in the, in, in the market for lawyers. And they were referring to about 200,000 individuals who call themselves lawyers. And we are 42 million. So I would want to urge the few of them, please don't allow a condition called megalomania to, 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 to attack you and say so, so, so that you, you do not find space for other people and in the, in the intellect. But then let me answer, answer your question. <laughs> thank you. What kind of <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, let, 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 me, let me answer the question now. <laughs> so, 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 so that now we are, we, are, we are able to have our, our discussion. You know, that is megalomania. Did you say that? <laughs> yes. What, what is that? It's called <laughs> mega. Uh, uh, what language is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you see, uh, uh, even, please, please, even lawyers don't know English. <laughs> the, the, All right, continue. They, they don't know, know the word megalomania. I mean, uh, okay, but I'll give you a dictionary. I have, a I have an online one. <laughs> That's not how it is pronounced. No. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, uh, Dival, on this question that you have asked. <laughs> you know, one, I, I want to just make a, a quick comment on, uh, on some of the issues that were raised by Wakili Otiende Amolo. Because, um, you, know, you know, he complains that, uh, uh, that Jubilee, and referring to Senator Mukomen, we are, we are making a beeline for parliament to go and change laws. And, and, and there is nothing you would say against that at all. You know, the work of parliament, and that is why, actually, uh, Wakili, for the first time, sought to be elected in parliament. The house you sought to be elected in is a legislative house. The work of that house is to make laws, review others, and, 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 and recommend amendments to others. That's, that's the job you asked for. So, so there is absolutely nothing wrong in either Jubilee or other legislators who are of like mind to come to parliament and look at why, in the first place, would the Supreme Court have not only the, the audacity uh, to, to act the way they did and uh, overturn an election. What went wrong? Those would be the questions that we'll be asking in Jubilee, and, and we'll be pondering into that law and see what do we need to, to correct and what do we need to amend. And upon realizing that we need to make this better so, so that there is fluency and efficiency, that's exactly what, what we'll be doing. You know, on, on this question of uh, the Nusumkata government, I don't want to, to indulge, overindulge on, on whether NASA wants Nusumkata government or not, but, but you see, you, you, you read and look at their trail all the way past a year before we went to the election. And it tells you that they have, even now, there is no talk, discussion, or proposals from NASA that are suggestive that they are looking for solutions to hold an election. They are laying barrier after barrier to ensure, and there would be no other recourse. You know, they, they, they already tested Nusumkate. And uh, that's a matter of fact, 2007, 2008, they know how this arrived. It, 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 it arrived via a big crisis. And I want to the people of Kenya and our viewers this morning to remember the words of the lead lawyer of the NASA team on the day the Supreme Court pronounced itself on, on, on this determination. When they went out, the first words they, uh, they uttered was about the constitutional crisis we are about to face because after 60 days there will be no election. And, and it was none other than, than, than Raila Odinga who has been going around saying that we are not saying that we will boycott the elections. He has been emphasizing, we are saying there will be no election. Can I quote that one of your journalists, Smitri, uh, and the other name is a tough one. <laughs> I can only remember Nani's, uh, Nani's other name. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, a name similar to, 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 to this other Wakili from uh, Bungoma. You know, this lady insisted know. upon an interview where he was asking Raila Amolo Odinga, what do you mean when you insist that there will be no election? And he dodged that question. He would not answer. He would, she would ponder, are you saying that you're going to tell your people? He would say no. <coughs> are you saying that you're going to respond? He would say no. But you know what he said at the end of it there? He said that if there were elections in sections of Kenya, if there was an election in Kiambu and none in Nairobi and none in, uh, in, in Kisumu, would you call those elections? So what is he saying? He's saying that they have a plan to sabotage the electoral process in areas where they think they have power and following to do so. Thank you. So that they can already realize this precipitated crisis 
of not having uh, a solution. And, and, and so, you know, all those references that they have made to the law from Article 140, you know, I would say in summary, uh, Dibal, we should be asking ourselves, in assessment of our current situation, where are we? We are at a situation whereby the Supreme Court has made a ruling. All right, let, let's hear from... Uh, and Mugum what is the way forward? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it is to have an election. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Senator oh, yeah, Murkoma, do, yeah, do you think, yeah, yeah. Do you think yeah, yeah. this yeah. is what is up uh, the collective sleeves of uh, uh, NASA? Because uh, we had also reports uh, from other outlets saying, yes, they are trying to come up with uh, a game plan where they, they, they will be from their own strongholds. Uh, some of the polling stations will not really open. That will create a crisis as what... Uh, uh, Senator Kimani or Matangi is saying, then of course that particular election will not be an election at all. And uh, so this is, in a way, uh, subtly trying to come up with a Nusu Mukate uh, government. Um, first of all, uh, I want to, you know, we say in Parliament, Parliament is a house of record. And for the record, um, <laughs> Mutula Kilonzo Jr. had talked about Article 134, why it says a person holding that office and why the discussion around temporary incumbency can occur. I want to remind Mutula Kilonzo that 134 doesn't just happen in a general election. Mm. It can happen if the president dies. And uh, 134 or resigns or, or, resigns, or is impeached. Yeah, a, a situation where he may not hold that office. Mm. That discussion then says a person because the deputy president at that point in time is the one holding the office as you do elections. And you can do the elections and it fails and you do and it doesn't reach 50 plus one, you do again, then the same circle will happen. That's why they used a person because it can be the president, it can be the deputy president. There can also be a situation where the president and the deputy are all impeached or all resign or all die. Then you can have a situation where the speaker of the National Assembly is acting in that office and again, you know, the circle. So I wanted just to put it for record that uh, his arguments around uh, that person not being the president are misleading. Number two is that um, uh, Atienda talks about us castigating Supreme Court. I think there must be a difference between castigation and criticism. And I, I find the Chief Justice, and I want to go on record, to be extremely emotional uh, over, 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 over destabilized emotions to the extent that he cannot control his emotions in public. When he came and read a statement as the chair of JFC, I found his uh, body language completely unacceptable. And the language even he was using, uh, like the deputy president said, the only thing that he didn't say was uh, Tibim and Tialala. Uh, because if you are a chief justice, there is a certain conduct expected of you. And we are allowed to criticize. We are criticized every day, Dibal. If you go to our Twitter, accounts now or Facebook, the insults we get, the insults I get every day. If I was going to deny Kenyan services or my people services in my county on basis of just insults and criticism and dislike, we cannot continue running the country. So the Chief Justice held, you know, like uh, Otieno Kajuang, the late used to say, if you don't like the smoke, don't go to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, once you are there, you must be ready for that criticism. But we must be given credit as Jubilee. We've but, never intimidated the court before right. they made their decision. But, but, but how will you, how, what metrics will you then use to judge a body language? Because it is bound to your own perception. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They it's subjective. Only, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's also subjective. Yeah. Uh, Atendo Mola will say here that, oh, he's a wonderful guy, he's a whatever. I am allowed to hold my own opinion. Might be as different as from another person. I'm allowed to do so. And I'm saying, if you are in such an office, you must be ready. Other people also have a different view of how I speak or how I present myself. But... That opinion must be respected. That's the point I'm talking about. Number two but, is but that... I, I, before you go to number two, yeah. when the president's saying that this is a monstrous judgment, yes. then is that positive criticism? Or it, is. It, yeah, is. it is. It is. Monstrous. It is. It actually, the president was even more restrained in what one would have said about Should that said judgment. More. That judgment is actually at the very minimum ridiculous. Yeah. Um, uh, Atiendo Mola talks about, uh, you know, the registrar. The registrar now, it appears that uh, presented the wrong document. It's even now coming out that the judges looked at the wrong document. No. It's abdication of duty to uh, scrutinize the right document. We are going to find out if it is actually at the record of, of, the, of, of the court that Thank they you. had original forms Thank and certified forms. It would be very sad right. that they reached that conclusion. Number two. Hold on to your number two. Then we hear from... No, no, let me just conclude because <sighs> yes. I know everybody. By the time you're going round, okay, uh, let me just conclude. Okay. It's okay. better okay. to... I have two, three points. And, you know, I had uh, uh, all my colleagues, including uh, um, uh, the man who has uh, a name twice, 
who couldn't find any other name across the country <laughs> <laughs> when he made Please. his long no, 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 let's submission. Let's, let's no, 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 just on a light note. He's my friend. <laughs> now, when you talk about the people, there has been this personal, personalization and uh, argument by the minority side that they are the people. When the constitution says we the people, by the way, it means majority of the people. When I supported this constitution, uh, I supported this constitution, and 60 something percent of the vo votes were passed this constitution, and they became the voice of we all the people. And that is the essence of democracy. You must accept that the, a majority will speak on behalf of everybody else, that whatever will apply to the rest of Kenyans will apply as a result of majoritarian decision. And so these people want to tell us in the Supreme Court they would get the majority they want and they're happy that four to two of the judges made a decision in their favor. And when we go to parliament to make decisions in parliament, they say, no, 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 you know, tyranny of numbers. Why are they not talking about tyranny of numbers in the Supreme Court? Number three is that... Uh, uh, um, uh, Meguna uses also this analogy that the president had left. He started a journey and he has not reached the destiny. I want to remind him that he started the journey, but the Supreme Court returned him to where he came from. And where he came from was, as it is in the Constitution, a validly elected president in 2013. Absolutely. And there can be no better analogy than what Meguna Meguna used. Um, when we talk about these 60 days, and I thank you, Miguna Miguna, because Miguna has finally let the cut out of the bag. That is what we have been talking. When you hear Kenyan say there is a conspiracy theory where people will leave the majority decision of the people through the ballot and they want to play games around the courts, Miguna has let it out of the bag by saying that they already have a game, that the Chief Justice is just waiting for the application. What they need to play on their side of the game is to ensure that there is no election in 60 days. They will get the decision. And, and, and the way Miguna spoke with, is fi with finality, yeah. that the chief judge is just waiting to announce that there will be a caretaker government, and there ensues the Nusum Kate we were discussing. Uh, number th uh, the next thing is uh, what um, uh, um, uh, Atienda talked about, Jubilee should be helping NASA. They have not asked for our help. You know, he's talking about Jubilee should help NASA amend, uh, fix IBC and so forth. We are telling them, come here, reason, let's reason together. Come to Parliament. We are meeting in this afternoon. We are meeting tomorrow. The reason why all these gentlemen were elected to Parliament was not so that they can, you know, uh, parade their skills on television. They have a very unique forum that the people of Kenya trusted. And I'm going to agree with him. It's a trust. You know, we've been given this responsibility to perform on behalf of the people. Right. And for the period that we are there, we must use it for the, and the last statement, I was just, for the, for the public, public good. The last thing I want to say is that um, uh, when you talk about the rules being changed midway, I and Mutula Kilonzo Jr. sat in a committee that changed the rules midway, before the elections. So there's, how mid is mid? How mid is mid? Right. I mean, let, six let's months ago up. was midway. Or let's hear Today is midway. Mutula we Kilonzo. cannot abdicate our responsibility as parliament to say we are not going to provide a solution on the amendment of the, of the laws just because someone thinks that uh, we are many. All right, but he says that he is, they, they've proffered a hand of, a, a hand of assistance from Bethan, but also you, as Jubilee, you've also been uh, not really rowing back on your stance, right? When I, they say I that am this speaking, hour demands, you say, I, no, I am no, speaking all Dibal, the officials of I, the IBC, I, no one is going home. I am, I am speaking, Dibal, here in my authoritative position as the majority leader of the Senate. And I am telling Mutola Kilonzo Jr., at any given day, walk to my office, uh, the first floor, we are going to have a conversation. I am ready in thank a you. formal way in Parliament, in right, the Senate, to, to, to invite all of them. We come and sit together. The only thing we are not going to do is to aid NASA to, to force a political crisis thank you. By, 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 by chasing uh, IBC commissioners. Right, and if they want to do, let me just say this. People are saying that Na uh, Jubilee is trying to protect Chiloba, uh, Chebukati, and so forth. We have no <laughs> power to protect those people. It's the Constitution that protects them. And if NASA follows the Constitution to remove them, we as Jubilee have Thank no you. problem. Let's hear from Tula Kilonzo. You know, we, we live in strange times. Uh, and uh, the strange times as follows, that uh, any reasonable person and any reasonable candidate of the magnitude of President Uhuru Kenyatta, whose election has been nullified, would be the first person together with the Jubilee Brigade and the brains they have, or purport to have, to make the demands that NASA is making. 
it's, uh, it's surprising that Jubilee continues to be in denial. I call it the Njoki Ndungu syndrome mm -hmm. the, of denial. Of, of when Njoki Ndungu wrote a judgment that is 440 pages, that means that she wrote more than everybody else and therefore everything about what she said is true. I will tell the nation that if you go to page 393 and 394 of Jogi Nungu's judgment, you will find that she has already contradicted herself on one polling station called Warde. It has two forms. The same thing we were talking about, that she could not scrutinize these uh, documents herself. And that is the denial that uh, a Jubilee continues to f uh, find themselves in. I remember, and I want to tell the public, that I argued with Senator Mukuman into the night in winter. He kept saying, it's you who is going to go to the Supreme Court, you will lose. They never quite internalized the rules that were made. I'm surprised <coughs> that uh, uh, Mama Tangi can argue that way, because I, I understand that he thinks that you can interpret this in a layman perspective. Murkomen understands what is called a majority judgment. Yeah, I agree. Even if that majority judgment is one page, it's a majority judgment. That is the way it is everywhere in the world. So this, the, the idea of uh, uh, work, uh, not work, uh, Githu, is business as usual. You have a president who is continuing working irrespective of the fact that his election has been nullified. You continue to act as if nothing has happened. You go back to the status quo ante that uh, Sen Senator Omatangi is referring to, which is not the position, hence the justification by um, uh, uh, Githu. And as far as I'm concerned, Githu is just trying to justify why it's AG. Uh, but otherwise, strictly speaking, he has misled the country and misled the president in all respects and everything. Now, the Chief Justice, to respond to him, of Kenya, has two capacities. He's both a judge and he's also an administrator. <laughs> when the Chief Justice says that he demanded for security and the security was not given, he's now speaking as the ad administrator of the courts in Kenya and says you should offer security to judicial officers. He's not sitting as a judge. That is the position that Mulkomen wants. And I have tried to encourage Senator Mulkomen to think differently because once he loses in politics, he might want to become a judge or the chief justice. And he will face the wrath of Kenyans when they remind him of the things he wants to say. <laughs> Number three, it's not possible that you can convince anybody that since you don't like the rules that were there previously in the, in the election, in the second fresh election, or the run-up, we can go back to parliament and amend the laws and change the system so that then it can suit you. That it is, uh, in, 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 in court parlance, we call it forum shopping. It's like looking for a judge who will agree with you. That doesn't work. So what would you uh, uh, rather have? Instead of NASA making a long list of demands, the song, same long list of demands th that w were the arguments that were in court, that which were allowed by a majority. N Jubilee through Murkomen, who you know, spends a lot of time, by the way, bashing people around, would go and demand that the officials, Praxidis Torre, I, she, she used to be a magistrate in Machakos when I was admitted, resigned. She didn't resign because she liked it. She resigned because she understood that she sat in an office which caused this country, that crisis. Now, so w my, my last point is this. When the, I remember an argument by a gentleman called Fred Gatia, senior counsel, and, uh, and Otienda Amolo here can confirm. He says, you know, Uru Kenyatta is prepared to do an all-inclusive government. He's the only one who talked about all-inclusive government. None of us has talked about Anusu Mukate. All we are simply saying, and the person who summed it up, and Murkomen who confirmed, Omtata, when he appeared before the Gen Select Committee, said the principle of an election shall be simple, accurate, accountable, verifiable, can only be done through an electronic system. He summarized in such simple terms. That is the way it is. And the Court of Appeal even summarized <coughs> even more by saying that from 2007, we have come a long way. There's no way a, a person from Iten, where this gentleman comes from, will walk to Nairobi carrying a form for the election of president, and we wait for them. That is where we are coming from. Thank you. And we cannot go back there. Right. Thank you. I want us also to, Miguna Miguna, look at uh, some of uh, the responses that uh, IBC also gave, uh, I think, yesterday uh, to what the, the, the demands of NASA, the irreducible minimums, were, right? 
and uh, you, you had something to say very briefly before we go yes, into this. Very yes, because I want us to yeah, the rest of this yes, time to actually look be kill into this. Yes, uh, Debal, um, I like logic. Logic is the foundation of reasoning, and uh, logic tells you that opinions cannot be based on fiction or myths. For one to hold a reasonable opinion, a valid opinion, it must be based on facts, concrete facts, not abstractions. And these facts must be based on credible evidence, not myths. So in a way, when you go to court, you have to present credible evidence, not just evidence. And I was shocked when uh, Justice uh, Boma Ojuang said he was looking for objective evidence. There is no such thing, <laughs> except when you're talking about expert evidence. There is no objective evidence. There is only credible evidence or evidence that lacks credibility. So when Jubilee came with uh, their evidence, the court then determines which is credible and which is not. Then the court, at some point, had an interlocutory application, an application that is made in the course of the proceedings by the NASA lawyers as to access to materials, election materials that needed examination for purposes of establishing facts. And they requested the reopening of the boxes and, and tallying, retallying of uh, the ballots. And then they also wanted access to the servers and the Kim's kids. The IBC and uh, respondent number three, President Uru Kenyatta, refused to consent to this. Mm. Then the court looked at the application and gave orders for access, which were largely disobeyed. And the court found not just in the court mandated reports that there were contents of court, the court found in its majority decision that, in fact, there was contempt by Chebukati. And, uh, and also the IBC. What NASA failed to do, and I still blame them up to today, uh, because I don't speak for NASA, although my friends here would want it to be seen that way. They failed to make an application quickly for contempt of court. They should have, uh, and they would rule the day they did not. So that these parties could be found in contempt, they would have removed them immediately. Mm. By this time, Chebukati would be history, Chaloba would be history, all the people that violated. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. When the court made that, those orders, and when the IBC failed to uphold or obey those orders, mm -hmm. the court had to make a negative inference on the failures. And the court did. In the whole, therefore, the court found, based on those failures, that there was something the IBC was hiding because otherwise they would have complied. Mm -hmm. And ordinarily in a court of law, Thank you. if you fail to abide by the court order, in fact you should not be heard. Yes, you must it, punch. There could be an application made, and there should have been an application made, that the first and the second respondent should not participate in the proceedings Sorry. going forward by virtue of not obeying court orders. Thank you. Let no, but, but that was just uh, <laughs> to respond, because I have to respond to what uh, the, my colleagues were saying. Then you asked the question about the IBC response, because you're trying to move so quickly yeah. and you gave them quite a bit of latitude. Let me respond to that. By virtue of the failures to abide by the court order, and there are now two contempts. That one are now purporting to do a runoff instead of a fresh election. Yes. That is a second contempt for which NASA should go to court and get the IEBC and Chebukati cited for contempt. And you can get them out of, of, of office on that basis also. Now, not only is Jubilee trying to change the rules of the game midstream, as players you cannot do that because they are not responsible for the rules, Chebukati himself does not seem to understand what he's supposed to do. If I were Chebukati, I would have resigned. And I don't care about the constitutional crisis because if you are indicted by a court of law, you should resign, the consequences be damned. Mm -hmm. You just do what is right. Nature will take its own yeah. course and the vacuum will be filled some way. And there are many ways you can do that. 
Chiloba is now chest thumping that there is nothing that was found against him and therefore he's not going to go. All the officers that were in charge of the IDC have refused to step aside, except the head of, of legal uh, department. Now, you find the ICT in structure is still in place. And in fact, it's still contaminated the same way it was during the August 8th elections. They are doing things in an opaque, murky manner that the court warned that if they continue this way, another petition would be granted by virtue of their failure. And they are continuing to fail. One last warning. They have now told us that they have requisitioned the services of the UN. UNDP. Mm. The employer of Chebukati, uh, of Chiloba. By the way, Chiloba came from the UNDP. Yes. So they are going back to Chiloba's employers. And the same, same UNDP messed elections in Zambia, the last elections. So they are trying to purport that because it is a UN body, it is above board. But we know what the UN did in Congo. Uh, they, they basically su superintended the assassination of uh, Patrice Lumumba. We know the mess they wrought right. in, in, uh, in Rwanda, and we know what they just did in Zambia. These are not legitimate bodies that are neutral, that would be able to help us Thank you. in this Let, case. Right. Okay, yeah. that one we don't really have a stitch of evidence to really ascertain that, but so I want us now to I really do deeper. have. You do have. Thank yes. you. Right. Uh, let's hear from uh, Dr. Otende. Uh, thank you, Dibal. Let me make three quick statements, then I come to the IBC issue. <coughs> yeah, first we, of all, we remain with only the yeah, yeah. ten first minutes. First of all, yes. my problem with my friend Senator Murkomen mm -hmm. is that he was in court as an advocate. He never opened his mouth in court. <laughs> but after the court judgment, he is busy bashing that very court, <laughs> calling that court a kangaroo court, calling that criticism. I, I criticism to to that. cannot be a situation where you call a court kangaroo. Criticism cannot be a situation where the president calls the judges thugs. Criticism insults. cannot be a situation where if you don't agree with the judgment, you call it a judicial coup. Yet you are the one who encouraged Raila to go to court. That is not criticism. The rule of criticism is simple. You critique the judgment. You don't attack the person of the judge or the institution of the court. Secondly, is the concept of sovereignty. And I'll not take time on this. Senator Murkomen, and I think that's the Jubilee view, believes that when you say we the people, it means we the majority. Yeah. That is not the position. We the people is all of us, majority or minority. You must accommodate everyone, not the way they are doing, that as long as you are the majority, then it is okay. Yeah, yeah. The third quick point is on the question of the registrar. I have seen all sorts of uh, outrageous uh, uh, you know, proceedings, that there's a complaint against the registrar, you know, that the ESCC and the DPP are investigating her and all that. Two things to be said of this. One is that the whole premise of this thing is wrong. It is premised on the dissenting judgment of Njokin Doom. Mm -hmm. In law, that judgment is of no effect at all, except academic. You cannot premise anything, not an investigation, not an inquiry, not a legislative change based on that dissenting opinion because it is not the judgment. It is not the law. The law is as read by the majority. The majority did not question the report of the registrar. And therefore, a purported inquiry by the ESCC, which I don't know how the ESCC would come in, there's no allegation of bribery and all, is completely useless. Secondly, the registrar was exercising a judicial function you are completely protected under the Constitution, Article 160, where you are exercising a judicial function. You cannot be subjected to this kind of nonsensical inquiry. I think that in fairness, whatever political game Jubilee or anybody else wants to play, they should spare the institution of the judiciary. Let me come specifically to the question of the IBC. Dibal, you have seen the IBC response to NASA's uh, you know, irreducible minimum. As I said earlier, the irreducible minimum, and you look at them, are not just NASA's <coughs> creations. They are founded on the complaints that were presented to the Supreme Court. They are founded on the judgment of the Supreme Court. They are what IBC needs to do so that we can have credible elections. And if they did it, we will not be wasting time with this debate. We will, will we have elections within 60 days or not? Okay. Now, unfortunately, the entire 
tenor, tone, and content of the response by IBC is whatever concerns you have, whatever judgment the Supreme Court had, that is your business, that's their business. For us, it's business as usual. And they're cheered on by Jubilee. Mm -hmm. That entire letter says exactly that. And for example, I could just mention 10 very quick things. Maybe I should mention only five. Yeah. But I could go. I mean, first of all, the personnel changes at the IBC. Chiloba takes the view and others take the view that no one was indicted. The Supreme Court did, was not asked to indict any specific person. Yes. But it was sufficient that the Supreme Court found that there were illegalities. Mm -hmm. It was sufficient that the Supreme Court said that they could not find footprints. It means this is like a crime scene. Mm. They could see there's a crime. But being, not being an investigative agency, it was not for them to find out who the exact criminal is. That means it's a whole criminal enterprise. But they also specifically found that the IBC was casual in conduct of elections and response. They found specifically that Chiloba, Muhati, and Kasait had sworn false affidavits yeah. in court. Those are very serious things. Now, IBC tells us that they had put an interim team to oversee the election. That interim team cannot work because first, Chef Bukati and his team ran away from it. Okay. <coughs> Secondly, you cannot put a deputy to somebody to supervise things when his or her boss is in their in office. It cannot work. So there must be personnel changes. Secondly, the printing. Al Gurea was paid a lot of money by Kenyans. Okay. The contract required them to print security forms. They failed to print, and we ended up with fake and authentic forms printed locally. Now, IBC tells us we cannot move away from them. Why? Because we have a framework agreement. Two years. Framework agreement, which was single-sourced. You can run away from it anytime without legal consequences. Then, <coughs> they have not told us. They are telling us we must go to Al Gurea. And it is important to see this. If you look at that response, they are not saying that they are working with the UNDP. No. They are saying their framework agreement for printing ballot papers is Al Gurea. What do they have with UNDP is a financing agreement. So what are they saying? That we'll get money from UNDP, but we will still go with Al Gurea. Okay. They have not explained how Al Gurea ended up giving us fake forms. They have not explained the excess ballot papers. You remember there was about 1.6 million ballot papers that were dealt with. Then you come to Safran Mofo. You know, this weird entity that provided the KMS kit that has not explained to us to date why those KMS kits did not work, did not transmit results. This weird entity that has put us in a very delicate situation where our own details are contained in a server in France, not in Kenya. And they want us to continue with that situation. And the arrangement Thank that you. there was is that they were to be assisted by Safaricom, and this is where Safaricom comes in. There was an agreement where Safaricom would transmit the data to France, then trans facilitate its transmission back to Kenya. <laughs> what actually happened is that it was merely transmitted to France, and it sat there. No one has explained to date, not Safaricom, not Safran, not IBC, why they transmitted data to France and let it sit there. Right, thank I you. mean, uh, I, I think, could I think, go on and on and on and on. I know, I know. You know? I, it's, a, it's a whole uh, uh, bunch so of... Uh, the summary of, of it is yeah. this. Very briefly. The summary of it is this. Even the media, and you, you said this, you said that, uh, and I think it's reported in the nation, that the IBC has allowed the media to report the results. That's not what they say in the letter. They are saying in the letter two things. One, that they will allow accredited media. Once you see that name accredited, then you know you're in problem. Because it means you are being controlled. Mm. Media is media. Secondly, what they say is that they will encourage, not permit. In this last election, they stopped the media All right. from transmitting. Thank so you. I could go on and on and on and on, All and right. that is the problem. Just as we are winding up, maybe it's also good that we just read, uh, because uh, he's mentioned, and of course we have the particular... Uh, uh, response here from IBC on, on maybe the ballot papers and result forms. The commission currently has two-year framework agreement with uh, Al Gurai Printing and Publishing uh, Firm for the printing of ballot papers and attendant results forms. The commission also has a financing agreement uh, project with the UNDP uh, strengthening the electoral process in Kenya 
and the UNDP has, in accordance with this agreement, offered to procure ballot papers and the result forms. The assistance is meant to aid, restore public confidence and trust in the integrity of the ballot papers as and result and result forms to be used in the fresh elections, as well as address the concerns raised by the Supreme Court. Then I jump to now the ICT infrastructure. The Commission's plen uh, plenary resolved that due to the time constraints before the fresh presidential election, the Commission will continue to manage the ICT Kim system implemented by OT uh, Morpho, that is Safran. The Commission will use both a cloud server and a backup platform. Nonetheless, the ICT infrastructure and protocols will adhere to international best practice. And then you mentioned media. We have independent ob observers and the media. Uh, where you say It says, in accordance with the law, the independent observers will be given access to the entire electoral processes or process at all levels, including ballot paper printing, deployment, and receiving of election materials, polling, counting at the polling station, and the tallying at the CTC and NTC. The commission will provide access to accredited media houses to cover results announcements at all levels. Media will be encouraged to show a live feed of the verified results. Accredited, and of course, uh, every media house was accredited uh, yeah. when we were going to uh, for, 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 for the previous elections as well. Maybe as we... The problem is what is media? Yeah, have we, we have very few... I have yes. to respond to a direct attack. <laughs> direct attack. I think you okay. should just go around. Okay. That's why I think you should go around. It will be my closing remark. We should go around the way we are. We've got less than three minutes to wind up, so don't let it be very lengthy. One minute, one minute. One minute. Each. Is time. Thank you. My yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, yes, I really. Minutes, I mean, everybody else. No, 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 no. Issues. You should be using this so time not to actually address yeah, those issues. I address my issues. You know what? You can't take a whole five and minutes. And I see. I speak on behalf of 42 million Kenyans. Oh, speaking oh, on behalf of all of us. Okay. So I all right. I, I, I did appoint you by representing Kenyans. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to very quickly. Touch very quickly. On what, what, one of the things that I have, the issues that I, I think, think three, I, I do not agree with, was I agree entirely with all the lawyers on this issue that yes, when a majority judgment is made in court, it is binding. Yeah. And, 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 and my colleague here said very well, it is respected. Actually, you follow it, but you are allowed not only to criticize it, but to disagree with it. Absolutely. You don't have to agree with it. You Absolutely. disagree with it, and in dis disagreement, you voice your disagreement. And disagreements are not about uh, shouting accolades. You point out to where the wrongs are. So, so I, I think that should be settled that way. <laughs> Secondly, on, on this uh, issue that was raised, that it, it was the president who said that he is the one who will be forming, forming an all-inclusive gov inclusive government. I want my colleagues to know that as of now, government is already all-inclusive. He doesn't have to form one. Who is not in government? Every single tribe, every single community is in the current government. And so when he's speaking about you know, an all-inclusive government, he's talking about the current status quo. You know, not, not forming the uh, Nusum Kate. Lastly, uh, or rather second lastly, on this issue of uh, what uh, Senator Mutula said, that the, the, the case by this Omtata activist, that it should be the final in guiding that our elections should be only, efe uh, only efficient when they're electronic. But the truth, according to that same, same court, is that our elections are manual. Finally, you know, I mean, follow the minor KI ruling that simply says that the elections end, Thank not you. the electoral process, Thank you. ends at the ballot box. When you have cast your ballot and it's announced, Thank you. Let it let's is manual. Let's leave it so so there's, there's, there's no issue. L let me make my last comment on, uh, on, 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 on the IEBC issue. You know, I want to say to the country this morning that we should all be prepared and know that there is no amount of either attempting to rectify or, or adhere to the issues raised by NASA that is going to appease them or they're going to agree with. Thank you very much. It does not address, it does not address what their intended end is. All right. The intended end is to have a Nusum Katagawa. Senator Murkumen, 30 seconds. Resolving the issues I, I, doesn't I allow just, that. 30 yes. seconds. 30 I, seconds. I, I think uh, the, I have seen the infatuation of NASA and NASA lawyers like uh, Atiende with wanting more comment to have addressed the court. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Uh, when the time comes, and when I want, I'll do it. <laughs> but there is a difference between winning a case and fixing a case. Uh, did Ochendo Molo and the team win the case? No. Did they fix the case? Yes. How did they do it will be revealed in a matter of time. What we are speaking as uh, lawyers, and I speak now as a teacher of law, is that we cannot be gagged when we want to reform 
the uh, Supreme Court, we cannot be told that the opinion of the majority of the Supreme Court was good and the independence of the judiciary must be protected, but the independence of IBC cannot be protected. 30 seconds, Redan. Uh, Senator Mshula Kilonzo. Uh, I want to spend my 30 seconds on Chiloba and a lady called Immaculate Kasait. Uh, I want to tell them, for free, please, run like hell. Uh, one Kivuitu made a mistake in 2007. He lived to regret it up to his grave. The two of you are going to pay very dearly for insisting to be in office when you shouldn't be in office. Any chaos that is going to happen in this country is going to be on your heads. Thank you. And it's not a threat. No, you need to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> you need to clarify. All right, let's hear it's from... Uh, 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 two, things, two things, the ball. Number one, Njoki Ndungu has not complained against the registrar. So I don't know on what basis the ESEC is investigating whatever they say they are investigating. And once Njoki Ndungu complains against the registrar, she becomes a complainant and a witness in her own case. So you can see the conundrum. She has to be careful. Two, uh, the IBC is, clear, is behaving like a murderer who has committed murder and hidden the body. Yes. And now the police have seen all the footprints, all the blood stains that lead to his home, and they have come to investigate. And all he does is say, produce the body, but he's the one who has buried the body. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The IBC must go, must be overhauled right now. Thank you, Dr. Otiendo. Otherwise, we cannot have legitimate elections. Very briefly, 30 seconds. Two quick things. In lawful exercise of constitutional authority under 27, we will be protesting, we will be staging a demonstration this morning uh, towards removal of the personnel. But secondly, I like what Omatangi said, and I hope one day soon that the government is all-inclusive. I hope soon we will have a show to look at the constitution of government by sex, ethnicity and qualification. Mm -hmm. And then we will find that Wamatangi is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we rest at that. Thank you very much. And this is, and and this is the admission that Uru is winning. <laughs> We're done. We're done. Thank you for your valued company. You've been watching People and Politics here on Decision 2017. Thank you.